Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to create a new background in a photo. I'm using Photoshop Elements 13 for this video. I have this photo of a guy in a cubicle. We're going to take him from this cluttered background to any background we choose. The first step is to make a selection of the subject. To do that, go over to the toolbox and make the Quick Selection tool active by clicking on it. Move your cursor onto your subject in the active image area and use the left and right bracket keys to resize your brush if you need to. The left bracket key makes it smaller and the right bracket key makes the cursor larger each time you press it. I need mine to be a little bigger so I'll press it a few times and that looks about right. The reason we do that is if you use a small cursor, the quick selection tool won't select as much area as a larger cursor will and if your cursor is too big it will select areas of your photo that you don't want included in your selection and then you'd have to go back and remove those areas. The reason for adjusting the size is to make it more efficient. So I'm just gonna click and drag over this guy and you can see that the selection for the most part is snapping right to the edges there's a couple areas where it went too far over here on the left. We can get rid of that by holding down the Option key on a Mac or it would be the Alt key on a PC. When I press um, Option or Alt, the plus sign turns to a minus sign indicating that we're in Subtract from the Selection mode. Now I'll just click and drag over that area. And there's another little spot right here sticking out I'll get rid of and over on the right side and then there's an area of his hair that got missed up here so I'm gonna leave it in add to mode that means um, not holding down the option or alt and clicking on that area to include it in the selection and there's a little area it's hard to see but right behind his ear that got missed and I think that's probably pretty good uh, we're not going to worry about the detail in his hair because we're going to use another method to select that. And that is with Refine Edge. So let's click on Refine Edge in the Tool Options panel. It's right here. As soon as we do, everything disappears from the photo except for the guy that we selected and the rest of the photo is white and the Refine Edge dialog box appears. Notice the top section of the dialog box is called View Mode and there's a little thumbnail of our photo in a box labeled View. If you click on the thumbnail a pop-up menu appears and we see several options. There are different options we can choose from to see our selected area on. On white is currently active because it's highlighted in blue and that's why our subject is on white in the active image area. When I click on black we see the selected area on a black background. The options I use most often from this pop-up list are on white, on black, and sometimes I temporarily switch to reveal layer, the one at the bottom of the list. Notice that each option has a keyboard shortcut listed after its name in parentheses. I like to use these shortcuts to quickly switch between views. Since with this photo we're using Refine Edge to help select this guy's hair, I'm going to use On White because it, provi it provides good contrast to his dark hair. I'll double click on On White to collapse the list and activate my choice. And there's a couple of problems with our selection, but for now let's focus on trying to get more detail around the edges of his hair. Let's move down to the next section, which is called Edge Detection. I'm going to start by dragging the radius slider towards the right to see if we can pick up some of his hair detail. Typically, you just want to move this a little. If I drag it over to 20-something, it gets all messed up. Actually, it depends on the size and resolution of the photo. This photo is considered low res because it's only 72 pixels per inch. If this image was 300 pixels per inch and I moved the radius slider to 20 something, 
it wouldn't look nearly as bad as this. So just determine how much to move it by visually watching what effect it has on your photo in the active image area. I'm going to go to about 5 pixels. 4.8 is close enough. I like how it's starting to show more detail around his hair and the rest of the edges look okay. There are a couple of areas like on the right side here by his face. I don't know if you can see that in the video but I think we can fix those areas so I'm going to leave it there. Now sometimes Smart Radius can help fix those other areas other than the fine hair details or fur or whatever the fine detail is you're trying to get. So I'll click on it and I'll click it on and off and see what happens. And it really doesn't have any effect on this photo so I'm just going to leave it off. Looking at this selection, in particular looking at his hair, you might decide this selection is fine. I, I can use it just how it is as far as the hair detail goes. There's a little more detail that I'd like to try to pick up uh, and show you how we can do that. So let's go for it. Remember earlier we saw how the different view options in the pop-up list each had a keyboard shortcut? Let's look at those again. So just click on that. On white is W. That's easy to remember. And the other one I want to use is that one at the bottom called Reveal Layer. And the keyboard shortcut for that is R. I'll actually click on that. And what that does is it shows us what our photo looks looked like originally before we isolated the guy from the background with our selection. The reason I want to look at that is because I want to look up by his hair and see how much hair is actually there that I can try to capture that I might not already have in my selection. Let's double click on the white option to collapse the list. With my left hand I'm going to place my index finger over the R key and on my keyboard and my middle finger over the W key. I can press those keys to switch between the two views. There's R and W. I'll press the letter R and then W to see where there might be some more hair detail that we don't already have. And I can see there's a couple strands up here that we don't have yet. So to try to pick up some of that extra detail in the hair, we can use the Refine Radius tool. It's this tool over on the left. I can tell that it's active because it's highlighted in gray. If it's not active, you can click on it to make it active. It works like a brush. You can paint over areas of the edge where you know there's more detail and it tells elements to look in those areas where you painted for pixels that are similar to the inside edge of the selection and to include them in our selection. I'm going to click and drag over that area and see if we can get some more of that those hairs in our selection. That did a pretty good job. Let's see what else is there. There's a few right here that I'm going to try to get. Okay, and there's a little cluster right here. So I'll paint over that area. That doesn't look too good. Uh, I see what the problem is. There's this, I don't know if it's a picture frame, but it's almost like the same color as his hair. So. Elements is getting confused. It's not sure if that's part of the background or part of what we want selected. I'll show you how we can fix that in a little bit. And I think the rest of his hair here looks pretty good. I think that looks like uh, some pretty good detail that we were able to pick up around there. Right below the Refine Radius tool, there's another tool that looks like an eraser and it's called the Erase Refinement Tool. Wherever you drag with it, it restores the original edge we had from using the Quick Selection Tool right before we click the Refine Edge button. So we can actually see what that looked like by clicking on the Show Original box up in the View Mode section right here. So if I click on that, this is what our selection looked like 
right after we got done uh, using the quick selection tool before we made any adjustments uh, in Refine Edge. And if I turn it off, this is what our selection looks like now. So even though our original selection doesn't look great, it's pretty jagged. It's better than what we have now other than the hair that we just picked up. I'm going to use the Erase Refinement tool and drag over the entire edge except for the hair. That should restore it to what we see right here. I'll turn that off, make the Erase Refinement tool active, and I can see there's that spot behind his ear that I'm going to try to fix. That worked pretty good. And then I'm just going to go along the whole edge of his shirt on the left side here. And then I'll go up on this edge. Notice there's like, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's like this gray area right here on his shirt that I want to get rid of that for sure. Okay, so that worked pretty good. And then up here, I'm going to go over the side of his face to try to fix that up there. And it still looks pretty bad, but we can adjust it some more. And actually up here where El I said elements got confused, I'm going to go over that and see if we can fix it. And that looks pretty good. And maybe just touch up a couple areas in his hair here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Like I said, we'll fix uh, some of these other problems a little further on in, in the tutorial. One thing I can try to do from the dialog box is to smooth out those edges of his shirt by using the smooth slider, which is in the just edge section. If I move it just a little bit, it really it does a nice job of smoothing out um, the edges of his shirt. Takes that jaggedness away. But now look at his hair detail on top. It got blurred and lighter and it doesn't look very good. So I'm going to back off the smooth slider a little bit. Just really anything over one seems to uh, blur the hair detail too much. So it helped a little bit. Even just one helped a little bit on his shirt. And it still left pretty good detail around his hair. For now I'm going to go with that. And I played around with the other sliders in this Adjust Edge section when I was writing the tutorial. And none of them really helped more than they hurt this photo. So I'm not going to take, uh, take the time to try them now. Just understand that there's no exact recipe for these adjustments. You just kind of watch your photo as you move the sliders because each photo has its own unique characteristics. You just have to try each one for the photo that you are currently working on and keep an eye on what effect they have on your photo in the active image area. Moving to the next section, which is called Output, we have a box called Decontaminate Colors. Sometimes when you select an object or subject from its original background, some of the color from the original background is still showing up because it got reflected from around the edges and decontaminate colors attempts to replace that color with colors from the selected area. I'll try that. Turn it off and on and when I do it really doesn't seem to have any effect on this photo so I'm just gonna leave it unchecked. The final field is called Output 2 and when you click on that field you get a pop-up list and it gives you um, different options for how you want to save your new refined selection just about every time if if not every time I choose new layer with layer mask I like that option because it's completely editable I'm gonna choose that let's click OK to close the refine edge dialog box and see what we get Look over at the Layers panel. Elements made a duplicate of the background layer, and then it added a layer mask to the duplicate layer. And the layer mask is based on the selection that we made using the Quick Selection tool. 
and the adjustments we made in the Refine Edge dialog box. In the next video, we'll look at our options for putting in a new background. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.